Are you ready to try our first house block? Come on, we got this. Hi everyone, I'm Kristen Som and today we are continuing with our cup of chair quilt. We are actually going to work on our first house block today. I know a lot of people are afraid of the house blocks, but I went through the directions and it doesn't look too bad. So I'm going to give you options. I'm going to show you some different things using both embroidery software and the machine. So where we are at so far, we have already completed section one and two and three and sewn those all together so that we can see our quilt really coming along. And then we have section four all complete and sewn together as well. And then yesterday we started section five and section five is starts with the wreath block. And like I mentioned in yesterday's video, make sure not to sew these two together because like I said, um, this part we will use in section five, but this part we will save for later for section six. So don't sew these together. All right. So just a reminder from yesterday's tutorial. So this is what we have so far for section five. And now we're going to continue continue on and we are going to work on the house block. So we are going to start with the tan house since that is in section five and I have mine in two folders but I'm actually going to do them together um, all in one video. So you can see they're on page 51 and 52 of the booklet. It actually goes on to page 53 and 54 also but don't be afraid it's not going to be hard I promise. So this one is done it says in two sections but it's actually three. So we are going to do the roof first and there are, let me talk about the roof real quick. So the roof has special cut instructions. Um, it's actually not so much because we're going to quilt. It's not really so much the cutting. It's lining it up from the very start. All right. We are going to, I'll show you how to do it. I'll bring it over to the computer and give you a visual. You can do this very easily on your embroidery machine or you can use embroidery software. Either way will work very easily, I promise. So on the roof, all that we're going to do is remember how we have of our quilting, we've got those five steps of quilting and uh, the third step is the placement stitch for the main fabric. So we are going to take our design before we start it, we're gonna take the entire design and bring it down to that um, placement of the main fabric. That is the end of the design. That's always the end of the design and we're just gonna bring it to the end of the design. And like I said, I will give you a video Visual on that it's very easy it's not a problem we've already got from the quilting we have our line there so it's just super easy to just bring it down to that line um, one thing I want to point out is make sure to pick the right quilting on this and we'll go over that but if you were to there's horizontal and vertical and if you do the wrong one it's going to look a little bit odd <laughs> your trees will be going the wrong way so just make sure um, when we get there to choose the correct um, orientation of the quilting. All right, so we're going to start with the roof. So the roof is on page 51 of our booklet and there's not much to it. Just one applique piece, one main fabric. Um, actually I'm wrong. There's also glitter. So we'll go over it. All right. So the first thing that we need is our main fabric and it is that light blue, very light blue, um, silky solid and this one we're going to start with this at eight and a half by six and a half and make sure to back this with fusible stabilizer so eight and a half by six and a half for our main fabric and then we have our roof fabric which is this plain red silky solid um, and this is going to be six by four and a half to start with I did back mine with fusible stabilizer that part like I've said throughout this series that is totally optional but I choose to do that I think it cuts easier it lays flat easier it looks better in my opinion when you back it with fusible stabilizer so six and a half by four and a half to start with our roof fabric and then we have the white applique glitter. This is the snow. That will be so cute. Living in Idaho, we do get snow. So this will be super cute on our, um, on our tan house. 
So when one thing, I always forget to open this a little bit before I start videoing. Oh, I got it. Look at that. All right. So when you have your um, glitter fabrics from, it's not really fabric, glitter vinyl from Kimberbell, you always want to make sure to take the topping off. You can see this here. This topping comes off before you start your applique. So on this one, it is four and a half by two and a half of the white glitter snow four and a half by two and a half and just make sure to take off that topping before we start and I'll tell you as we work on it that we are going to iron it down once it's um, tacked down uh, we'll go over all of that part in photos all right and then we are going to use batting because we're going to quilt this so the final cut size of this let me see if I remember that's funny. So there isn't actually a final cut size on this um, because we're only going to cut the bottom and I'll go over that when we get there. But since our quilting design is four by six, we know that we want a piece of batting that's five by seven. That makes it easy. So five by seven on your batting. And then for the quilting design, we are going to use trees one in four by six and we want the vertical design. Very important to choose the vertical design. So since it comes up alph alphabetically, the first one you'll see is the horizontal. So make sure to keep looking, go, keep scrolling down and find the vertical one. Four by six vertical. And the reason it's vertical is because the roof is going to be turned. We can actually do this design in a five by seven hoop. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a bit too. So um, trees one, four by six vertical design in four by six quilting design. All right, quilting size. And you can use your five by seven hoop on this. So that is just the roof. That's all we're going to do at this point is the roof. Then after we complete the roof, we're going to jump into the tan house. All right, the tan house is on page 52. We're going to do both the both of the blocks together. Um, in one tutorial. So on this one, there's quite a few little pieces and let me just pull them out of my packet here. And we are going to start with our main fabric as always. All right. And it, again, just like on the roof, it is the light blue silky solid big piece here. This one is eight and a half by eight and a half to start with for our main fabric for the tan house. This is the bottom portion of the house that doesn't include the roof. All right, and then we have some applique pieces. So, very fun. Oh, this is gonna be exciting, guys, I promise. All right, so then our house is tan, right? The tan house is this light, tan, silky solid. I did back mine with feasible stabilizer. Again, that's optional. Um, and this we're going to start with that five by six, five by six, all right? You can see that it's going to go the long way, right, on the house, five by six. All right, on your house fabric. And then we have the door and the windows and a window pocket. So, so the door is this really pretty pink. How cute will that be with a tan house? A pink door. There's actually a house in Las Gatas that had a bright pink door on, I think it was a tan house. It was super cute. Um, so on our door fabric, this we are going to start with at two and a half by three and a half, two and a half by three and a half. Make sure, um, actually your choice again, back it with fusible stabilizer. I did on mine. All right, that's the door, two and a half by three and a half. And then we have two white fabrics. We have the window and the window pocket. So on the window, it is white with white dots. And we are gonna start with this at four by three for the window, four by three. I did back mine with fusible stabilizer and that's for the window. Then the window pocket is this thinner one. It's the same, it's the white with white dots. And this one is two by four and a half, two by four and a half. And we are going, I'll tell you when we get there, but we're gonna fold it in half and iron it and uh, make a little crease. And I'll, I'll go over that part when we get there. But that's all the parts that we need for the tan house. And as always, we're gonna quilt this. So we're going to start with a piece of batting let me see in my notes, seven by seven. So again, this one doesn't give us a final cut size because we're gonna cut just the top, I believe, of the house. So there isn't an actual final cut size yet because we're gonna sew them together. I'll go over all of this, but for your batting, since our quilting design is six by six, we're gonna want a piece of batting that is seven by seven. Seven by seven for your batting. And then our quilting for this one, 
is that trees one just like on the other one and again make sure to pick the right orientation so that your trees all line up you wouldn't want half of like the roof part of your house to have trees that are sideways and then the bottom part of your house to have trees that are going the correct direction make sure to pick the right one all right so on this one we are going to have our quilting where is it here it is six by six of trees one in horizontal so remember i said that the vertical for the rooftop is because the design is turned this one the design will be straight and so we want to use the horizontal design so basically all of your trees are going to be going this way not this way all right i hope that makes sense um, but anyway i will show you a visual on the embroidery machine so six by six horizontal design of trees one for your quilting on this. All right, and then I wanna real quick talk about stabilizer. So I mentioned that I use backing on all of my fabrics. I'm using the Kimberbell fusible backing. For this project, we need wash away topper. I actually don't have any of the Kimberbell wash away topper, but I wanted to show you this so that you see the color. It's this light aqua color when you're looking for the wash away topping. And the reason I mentioned that is because I have wash away embroidery stabilizer. This is the one that goes in the hoop. The, the difference between these is this one goes in the hoop and you can see it's thicker it's woven all right this is for inside the hoop and we've already used this a couple of times um, on this project even but the topper is different this is a different brand but this is what the topper will look like it's thinner and um, it's just the topping so there is a Kimberbell one of the uh, wash away topper all right so anyway, you will need this and the purpose of it is so that the foot won't catch. So when we put down our window, we're gonna do the window first. That will be our first, well, after the roof. We're gonna do the roof and then part A and part B of the house. And the first part, part A, is gonna be that window. And we're going to, when we put on the um, window on part B, after we start working on part B, we get pretty far into part B before we place that pocket window. And we're gonna put this on top of there so that the foot won't catch on it. So that's the purpose of the wash away topper. Um, you could use pretty much, honestly, you could even use tear away if you needed to. This is a much better option, but if you don't have it, there are other options. All right. So one other thing is people have asked me, can I do the roof and the house in one hooping? And I'll show you when I get to the embroidery software, when I get to my computer, you can do it. You absolutely can do it. And some people wanted to do it on their tree top and tree bucket. Let me show you that real quick. So here's the tree top and the tree bucket. And if you have a big old hoop, you could absolutely do these two in one hooping. The reason I didn't is because I like the quilted look. I like the look that these are blocks, right? And this one especially, you can see there's that line all the way across. These are, this is a block and this is a block. And I wanted to make sure to keep those separate. On this house though, there's, it takes up most of the fabric. So there isn't, there's like a little edge on each side. So you could absolutely join these together, but I wanna warn you, um, you'd have to do it pretty carefully. So you'd have to do it out of order. You would have to obviously do the pocket first, always the pocket first. And then instead of doing the roof and the house, you would have to do the house and then the roof because the roof would go on top of the house. You'd also have to take out some steps so that they don't um, stitch on top of your other part. You'd have to turn that roof. Um, so little things, it's absolutely doable. And like I said, there's only a little bit of the lines, but here's the difference on the dimensional blocks like that um, tree top that was a dimensional pocket right we had this dimensional pocket we get to open up this pocket put something inside this house one it is not um, a dimensional block at the at the block at the quilt blocks I don't know if that makes sense but um, this one, we're gonna do the roof and we're gonna do the house and we're gonna sew them together. And there's already gonna be a quarter inch seam allowance. Everything's gonna already be there for us. So there really isn't a reason to join these together. This isn't like um, it'll make it easier to line up. You know, and that would be a key reason of why you would wanna do the dimensional blocks together in one hooping is it probably would make it easier to line it up. This isn't one of those, all right? This is, we're just gonna sew the two pieces together using a quarter inch seam allowance um, in the regular way that we've done our other blocks. 
the pocket is on the window. So it's not going to affect that part. You absolutely can do it, totally up to you. Um, but like I said, you'd have to make some changes to it. All right, so uh, that's all I can think of for now for, um, for our house block, our tan house. I'm going to bring you over to the embroidery machine. Um, not so much to have you do it on the, on, the, um, on the computer, but more so you can get a quick visual, all right, of how we're gonna move it and what it will look like once it's moved. And if you decide to do the two together, I'll give you a visual of that. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Hey everyone, I'm at my computer now. Oh, almost forgot my microphone, sorry. Um, I am at my computer now and I wanted to give you a visual real quick on what um, it will look like when we move these designs because it's extremely important that we move the designs um, for this tan house. So I'm going to go ahead and open in Brilliance Essentials and it opens to the last hoop I used and it says I'm on my 7 by 12. I'm going to go ahead and change my hoop size to 5 by 7 um, for the roof. We just need a small hoop. <clears throat> All right, and then I went to the preferences folder and just clicked on the um, hoop size that I wanted. And then I always go here to this uh, compass and click on H just so that it will zoom in just to the hoop itself so I can see all of the hoop. So I'm going to go ahead and start by bringing in the quilting design. So I go to this merge stitch file and then I am going to look for my quilting right there. And it's tree one and embroidery files, PEZ for my machine, and it will populate to all of the designs. So remember, we want the vertical one on this. We want four by six vertical. So right there, four by six tree vertical. Double click on that. All right, and it goes to the center of the hoop, and then I want to bring in the roof design. So I'm gonna to go to merge stitch file here. And I'm going to close up the quilting just to get some room so I can see where my other stuff is. So cup, cup of chair quilt right there. Click on the plus sign to open it up. Embroidery files, Pez for my machine, and then the cup of chair quilt. And this is a house block. It's in the sixth folder here. All right, and we are looking for the tan roof. Tan house roof right there. Double click on that. All right, so you can see it goes to the center. If I click on this, you can see very clearly center with these black squares. And we want it the very bottom of the design, or really it's the right of the design because of the orientation. So this is the bottom of the design right here. This orange line is the bottom of our design or the right, and I'm probably saying it wrong, to the right side of the design because of the orientation. But to me, it's the bottom because it's the bottom of the roof, but <laughs> you get what I'm saying. All right, so our goal is to bring this design all the way down to here, and I'm gonna show you how easy that is. You just click on it, and we just are gonna use this line here as our guide. Click on the stitching and just bring it down, and then we want to make sure and keep it centered, which we can see when we click on it. So if I click anywhere on the stitching, there's the black squares. If it were off at all, I would just move it until it is staying centered here and staying on this very bottom line here. You can see it right there. And you can even zoom in. So if I were to click, let's see, like here, and then zoom. There's another way, let's see. I don't remember, I used to do this all the time. Um, but you can zoom all in. Um, when I'm zooming, I'm just using the um, scroll button on my mouse and you can see if you've got it just right where you want it on here. Let's see, that looks really good. Let me see if I move it. So when you click on it, you can really see um, if you're lined up right. And so you saw I just did that. That was how easy it is. All right, super easy. Go back to hoop to see it all at once. All right, and then you would just do a file save as. You've got your quilting and you've got your um, the roof. All right, and if you were to merge everything, you would want to change the colors, but I'm going to do it in, in uh, two hoopings. It's a really three hoopings counting the window, um, but I'll show you another thing if you chose to do them all together. All right, so this is the first one. So go to File, Save Stitch File As, 
And like I said, you can absolutely do this on your embroidery machine. You would just same thing, bring in your quilting design, leave it centered, bring in the roof design and move it down to that orange line. That when I say the orange line, it is this third step here. Let me click outside so you can see there, right there. Okay, it's blue here, but it's also orange. It's the placement is the blue one. So placement of the main fabric, the orange is the tack down of the main fabric. And since it's right on top of each other, that's why we see the orange on the top. See it right there? Cause the blue is right underneath that. So same thing, when you brought it to, when you do it on your embroidery machine, you would just bring it down to that orange line and, and continue from there, no problem. So if you're going to do it on your um, embroidery software, make sure to do a save stitch file as I've already done it. So mine will be in here. Um, I have mine as tan house bottom, oh, roof right here. Tan house roof with quilting five by seven. That's how I named mine. You can name it however you want to name it and then um, save it. And if your machine is on, you can send it to your machine if you have a Wi-Fi machine. So that's the first one, super easy, right? So now I'm gonna open another tab, file, new new page, and you can see it opens another tab. Here's that first one we just did, and here's the second one. All right, and on this one, we are going to do the roof. The, the window itself, um, you don't need to make any changes to it, so you would just open that on your embroidery machine, stitch it out, and we'll go over that step by step, don't worry. But as far as the moving, the roof and the house itself need to be moved. So on this one, I'm gonna change my hoop, because right now I'm on my five by seven hoop, you can see it down here. I'm gonna change it to my eight by eight hoop, right here, say okay. And then as always, I like to hit the hoop button to make sure I'm seeing all of the hoop. All right, and we're gonna start by bringing in the quilting design. So merge stitch file, and then my cup of chair quilting is right here. And we're looking for tree one, embroidery files, Pez. All right, and it populates with all the different design options. And we're looking for six by six horizontal. Very important to get the right orientation. Six by six tree one horizontal right there see here's the vertical we want the horizontal double click on that and it goes to the center all right and we want that to stay in the center but we want to bring in the the bottom of the house or the main part of the house and we want to move it all the way up so i'm going to show you so here's that orange line if i click on this you can see one three and one four are both that main fabric placement and tack down and that is the end of the design. That's what we're looking for. That's our goal right there, the orange design there or orange line. All right, so merge stitch file and we're going to bring in the tan house. I'm just gonna close these so I can see all my stuff. All right, cup of chair quilt, embroidery files, Pez is what I use for my machine and cup of chair quilt. And then it's under the house blocks, this sixth folder here. All right, and then it's in tan house right there, tan house part B. All right, double click on that and it goes to the center and we need to absolutely positively make sure to move it. So you can see here's the top of the house right here and here's the top of the design where we want it. So all we're gonna do is click on this and bring it up and try and keep it in the center. Perfect, wow. All right, so here's that the black lines, the black squares that show you that it's centered and then the design now is up at the very top and you can always zoom in. I haven't totally um, figured this out really well yet, right there. So when I clicked on it, so what I did is I'm clicking where on the design. So say that I click down here, it's gonna move to that part of the design so that then I can zoom in. So if I'm here and I just use my mouse to zoom in, that makes it so easy. And you can see the line here and you can see my design. All right, let me click outside so you can see it. There's the line, there's the top of the house. Um, so this, this is perfect. I'm going to go back to hoop so we can see it at another angle, right? And if I click on it, you can see we're right at the top there. That's our goal. All right. We've got that exactly perfectly. That's great. And so once you have it like that, once you've got it where it's at the top of the design, then you want to hit file, save, stitch file as, and I've already done it. Um, and I'm saving it in my house block so that it's easy for me to find. 
and then you would just save it with, um, I, I named mine tan house um, bottom because it's the bottom part of the design, the house part. You could just say tan house, but just make sure you have one that's roof and one that's house. Either way, however you want to name it, um, mine has tan house bottom with quilting, and then I put 8x8 eight eight for my hoop. So that was really easy. So I want to give you one more visual. If you decided to merge them together, um, I am not going to do that, but you absolutely could. It's super doable if you had a larger larger hoop. And actually, you could even do it on an 8 by 12 hoop. It's You don't need a huge hoop for this if you wanted to merge them together. But like I mentioned, um, merging them together, it, you have to make sure to do them in the right order. Super important. Um, and then you would have, you. it's not going to change, it's not going to make the dimensional part any easier because it's just the window, this window. See right here? This is where we're going to put that part A. Part A is just the window. We're going to work on that window and we're going to place it here. So it has nothing to do with um, putting the two blocks together. That we're just going to sew them together with our quarter inch seam allowance. But I'll give you a quick visual just in case. So file, new page. All right, and then I'm actually going to just copy and paste this. This would be easier. You would need to bring in your quilting and bring in your roof. I'm going to just copy all of this, make sure I've got all of it, and say Control C. And I'm going to bring it to this. Um, oh, I need to change my hoop size. So I'm going to go to Preferences, and I'm going to choose my 8 by 12 hoop right there. And then hit compass rows so I can see it all. All right, and then I'm going to hit Control V to paste that. All right, so you can see, remember, it comes in sideways, so we would have to change that, obviously. You can group it. Let's go ahead and group it. Mary Bigger showed us how to do that. That was a really good suggestion. So if I group this, then I can move it all around, and it's not going to matter. It's not going to separate. All right, so the big thing here is you want to make sure to rotate it. So right here, this rotate 90 degrees turns it to the correct direction for our, a bigger hoop. And then for now, I'm just going to move it out of the way. I'm going to try and keep it centered, but I'm going to just move it out of the way because I need to also bring in that house. Now, one thing is you have to do the house first because you can see that this is going to come on top. And like I mentioned, you're going to sew these together with your quarter inch seam allowance. So you would have to make some changes so that it doesn't go. You want this in your seam allowance. So... I wouldn't do it in all honesty. I wouldn't do it. You would need to um, make some changes, but let me just show you the end result anyway. All right, so if I go to, oh, you know what? I'm not gonna merge it in. I'm gonna bring in my older one. So right here, the one I already moved and already added the quilting, I'm just going to copy this and hit Control C, making sure I have both parts, bring it to my new folder and click somewhere and say Control V to paste. All right, and I'm gonna group these just so I can move them easily. All right, and then I can click on the stitching and move it. So notice here, I have these um, placement stitches that if I were to line it up, it's going to go on top of the other. And that's a problem. You wouldn't obviously want that. Um, so let's see here. That's why I was saying you wanna do the house first. If you're going to do this together, and again, I don't recommend it, but you would do the house first so that this is on top, so that all of this will go over this top part of your house here. Yep, and the other thing I would do is I would take out the placement stitches because this will stitch on top of the other as well. So there are changes to be made on it if you chose to do it. It's definitely doable. Um, you absolutely could do it, but there, there isn't a purpose to it, actually. There really isn't. You might save a little bit on stabilizer, I guess. Um, but really, you want these two blocks to sew together. But here's your visual, all right, of what the two will look like. We're going to sew, obviously, these parts together here. And we're going to, you either, if you did do this, um, you would need to make sure to do your part A first, that window. Make sure to do your window before you start, and then you would do this bottom part and then do the roof on top. Um, but again, you'd have to take out some of these the 
placement stitches, which is super easy. You would just, once you have it all lined up, you wanna use those to line everything up, but then you would just go in here and click delete. All right, super easy. And then on the house, um, same thing on the quilting for the house, the third and the fourth step. All right, and then actually, now that I think about it, because you've got your quarter inch seam allowance, see this, you've got this open space. You wouldn't want that. You actually want to move it. My mistake, sorry, I didn't mention that. Um, so if I click on this, I would need to move it down so that it goes right on top of the placement stitch of the batting. All right, there. that's a good point. I totally forgot about that. All right, and then once you have them together, you can see that the placement stitch of the batting is together on both of them. Once you have that, you would probably want to group the whole thing to get it centered. All right, you could highlight it all like I just did or whatever, but edit group and then bring it down because you want to make sure that this would be centered in your hoop. So centered there, centered there. All right, and then this still would be, this part would be first, so that the roof would cover this part. Um, same with this, this would be covered, but this wouldn't. So this, this red line um, on your roof, you would see this. You would have to take that out because we're gonna do the house first, so it would stitch this on top of your house which actually, that would work because you would put your fabric down. No, it would be on top of your fabric. I wouldn't do it. <laughs> so anyway, here's your visual though of what it will look like when we've got it all complete, but we're going to do it together by sewing it. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Remember the order is going to be part A, which is the, um, actually I'm gonna start with the roof. So the roof first, cause it's gonna be a standalone um, block. And then I'm going to start on the house. And with the house, we always start on the roof or not, sorry, on the pocket, which is the window. We'll do that first. That's part A and I'll go over all of this with photos and then we'll do part B and uh, which is the rest of the house. And we'll add in that pocket window during that process. So anyway, let's get started.
Hey everyone, so once you get to this point, now we are going to create that pocket. So you can see that we have part of the window pane here and we are gonna take our pocket and we are going, our pocket fabric, and we're going to fold it in half again, just like before, wrong sides together. All right, just like that. And then we're gonna place that with the fold at the top and we're gonna line it up here and here. I'm gonna try and do this working around a tripod, so put up with me here for just a moment. Basically, sorry, fingers are in the way. Um, line this horizontal line up with this horizontal line here, and then same thing, line up this vertical line with this one, all right? And keep in mind that the outer box here is larger, so you're not lining up with these. Let me show you here. You're not lining up with this and this because this part and this part are larger. You can see, hopefully, here that it is larger. So you're not lining it up with this, you're really just lining it up with this and this, all right? And then once you get that lined up, then you're gonna tape it in place. Tape it really, really, really good, and then we will do a tack down stitch, all right?
and my shirt today is Ride Like a Girl. This is actually one of my most favorite shirts. I love this one. Um, and I will add a link. I believe it was Embroidery Library, and I'm not sure that you can get this design. It was something that you um, got for free if you purchased X amount of dollars over a weekend or something. So I'm not sure, but I will take a look and see if I can get a link for you. Oh, and the shirt itself is from Amazon. It's one of my favorites. I really like this one. I'll add a link to that too. <music> 